Um, hello everybody, this is uh, Michael from WSB in Minneapolis. Um, I've been asked to make uh, some docu documentation on um, how to model a complex intersection, so I thought I'd make a video and uh, we'll just uh, see how it goes. <coughs> um, what you're looking at is the um, geometrics of the project and I've got the alignment pulled in there. Um, if we turn on the, um, the 3D uh, into, the, into the, this view, um, you can see that I've uh, developed this uh, corridor to a, a spot right here, and then this corridor, which I might call the primary corridor, goes all the way through. And I've uh, did a little bit of a backbone only, I believe, on the right side right here. That eliminates uh, the end conditions, which uh, I think I have a curb and gutter going all the way through here, but once again, I've kind of um, clipped that off, or not clipped it off, but just uh, turned off the, uh, the, the end stuff so that it's just the lane. If I turn off the 3D, and I go to my levels in 2D and put on my uh, construction elements. You'll and if I turn off the GM, and let's see, let's turn off the curve faces too. There, you can see this is the uh, the limits of my uh, lane as I go through there, my right lane, and this is, I think, the, the limits of my right lane as I come out of the intersection going along that. And if, once again, if I turn on the, uh, the 3D, you can see that I'm using this as the, uh, the edge of pavement for my right turn lane right there. And this construction geometry is being used as the edge of pavement of my right turn lane for this for this uh, corridor right there. And I was strategic about that. Um, the the geometrics, if you look at it right here, this this taper coming off the uh, <clears throat> maybe call it an acceleration lane. This taper right here is based off of a curve, so that is going to be a B-spline. And then that uh, couples up with a straightforward um, radius right there that ties it in with, uh, with this leg of the road. And not so much on this side. This side right here is just an offset of the alignment to div for that right turn lane and then a straight uh, radius bringing it into this taper, which is a taper off of a curve, which once again gives you a, a B-spline. I've made those, I don't like B-splines, so I always um, rewrite my B-splines B as uh, simple arcs or compound arcs, depending. And let's see, let's see if we can get into the, uh, the nuts and bolts of this. Um, so how do we how do we get those two things to uh, to jive or how do we how do we fill this area right here which is a big swamp of warps and geometry and eventually into 3D and let's see if I can get rid of that get rid of my geometrics I'll even get rid of my alignment let's open up my my levels and I'm going to turn on my pavement edge and let's see I think that's for the turn lanes and my lane lines are for my my primary lanes right there and there we go so one of my favorite tools um, for doing this is the horizontal geometry it's this tool right here is the simple arc um, I'll hit that and if we read that. Um, I've got my trim extend off and a locked radius of 20 and a feature definition. I'll uh, make that our my company's default uh, for 
construction geometry, um, alignment construction. And a little lecture on this, this geometry that's in the 2D view from modeling. If I hover over that, it says, it will say, this is co complex element left turn top. And it belongs to this corridor and it's this feature. And the uh, most important part, the actor profile, a profile by template, which means that that geometry right there has a profile associated which is defined by the template. Good to know. If I come down here to the lane um, complex element uh, left lane top, I thought it was right but it's left, that one is belongs to a corridor and it has a certain feature and once again most importantly it has an active profile that is defined by the template. Once again good to know. If I've got two pieces of geometry that have active profiles by any means, I can, in good situations, use this simple arc command to join them uh, in, the, uh, in the plan view. And I will do that now. I will hit the left turn and my second element. Click, right click to get to the R. Uh, left lane 2 and it's not giving me the radius I want there. I'm going to hit Alt to unlock that and let's see I'll just unlock it from up there and let's make that a little bit bigger so that it ties to where I want. Okay it's not doing what I want to do so I'm going to try that over again. Hit uh, left turn here, second element Second element there, and maybe I, did I hit that? There we go. So this I'm just throwing in the radius of 60 right there, and trim extend none because I'm not going. I'm not, I'm not going to trim it extend it in either way. Um, I'm going to do the same for this side over here. I'm going to come to this. Uh, right turn top, the green one. Click that and I'm going to click on once again the left lane top here. And there we have that radius. Uh, trim extend none. Now if we turn on the geometrics for the project we can see that we're kind of close with the with the uh, 60. That was my guess. I think it probably was 60 at one time. Looks like right now the uh, the designer changed it to 59.5 which I believe is the same on the other side so I will make that 59.5 just to get that out of the way Let's see did that take yeah and we'll do the same to this side over here uh, 59.5 enter okay um, so we got that now the magic of having those done by this tool, uh, the simple arc command, is that I can come right back into the uh, vertical geometry and use my, as of today, my all-time favorite tool, the quick profile transition tool, which, uh, as it states, does a quick profile transition between those previously already defined uh, geometries and profiles. And if we, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll bring this bring this uh, into, I'll put in a, uh, view it in, let's see, it's not letting me view it in, it's uh, profile mode, what about over here, nope, there we go, I'll do this one, open profile model, I'll always do number seven, And if I go back to this tool, the Quick Profile Transition tool, I will be able to uh, Quick Transition Method, Parabolic, locate what to define this element right there. And as you can see, it made a beautiful transitioning profile that is dependent upon that 
uh, edge of payment here and then, then this edge of payment here. And I'll quickly do that again for the other side in the same manner. Um, let's see, parabolic. It won't even let you do that radius if, if it's not defined by two different uh, geometries that have active. And I think if we open, if we look at the uh, profile view of that radius right there, we can see that that also has a a nice profile. Um, it automatically made it the active profile, so we can continue on with <coughs> developing the the area here that will eventually be. Maybe I should have said it before. We're eventually going to make a site terrain for this area. Um, which are going to be defined by this side, this side, and uh, the sides over here, and the sides over here. This side over here, on the uh, secondary corridor, I'm going to close off by utilizing a line between points. And very, very important, I'm going to click on the edge of that previous radius. Let's see if I can get it. Let's see, I might have to turn off the, uh, let's see, let's turn off the lane lines and the pavement edge so that we know we're getting, we know we're getting it. Okay, and I'll click right there, and I will click on, um, turn off the, No, I'll have to use a intersection. There we go. Okay. And uh, you know, if you don't click on those ends, I I would love to say that it's not important. You can just move your geometry with the uh, move thing too. But you know what? You have to do it on the first try, or else it's not going to uh, connect. And uh, the way that you can uh, test this right off the bat to see if this is legitimately connect connected to those radiuses is by adjusting the radius. See what happens. I'm going to put in 50. Um, and as you can see, this line is tied to that, so it updated and made that um, made that a, a connection. And I will just Control-Z to put that back. And I'm going to carton off this side over here with a little more complex um, geometry. I'll put my, um, let's see, I'll utilize geometry that's actually within the model, the, the DGN. Um, so this edge right here, this edge of pavement line that I used to, for the edge of pavement is a curve. And what I want to do is I want to get a line that connects on there, connects on this edge. Let's see, okay, I grab that. And I'm going to click on here as a helper within, within the, the area defined by that lane. So I'm just gonna click right here and I could just click in outer space, but I think that'll probably help out, um, help out right, right there. Now, on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie to that radius. Got that, and then I'm going to bring it back and tie it to that soon-to-be edge of pavement for for my transition. And once again, I'm going to test this to make sure that everything is connected. I'll bring that down to 50. And let's see, it looks like that one didn't... You can see it, there's not a connecting sign right there. So that was a, a good test that uh, it didn't actually uh, connect. So let's try that again. Line between points, we'll try to... We'll, connect. we'll use the intersection tool right there and we'll connect it to there and 
we will test that. Let's see if we just click on it. You can see that it's got the highlight or the little um, thing that says that's connected by a intersection. And if we click on that radius, let's see if it updates. Looks like it updated, so that's good. And we can do the same test on this side right here. See, I'm gonna do a quick, do a quick uh, pause. 